So, hi, I'm Lars Danecker from SAP, and I'm a big data architect uh, working in the team of the SAP Data Hub. So, whom have you heard already about this software from SAP? No one, that's good, that makes it easy <laughs> for me because, you know, I'm not too boring then in this case. So, um, the question is why is SAP so much investing now into big data technology and especially also in such a technology? So, some months back, or even let's say some years back, SAP had a very comfortable situation. We had our ERP systems, they are all running in a data center, manageable amount of, uh, of systems basically, no worries, no problems, SAP was good. But what we were seeing with our customers in the recent times when we were adding all of these new technologies, cloud, machine learning and so on, is that we have an increasingly complex landscape even within a company. We're even seeing that in some, let's say, departments, you have different strategies for storing your data. So, for example, your research and development department, the fancy guys, they use everything in the cloud. Sales, the sales guys, they don't want to get the sales numbers into the cloud, so they still store it in their data center. And what we basically see is, is a more and more disconnect of the whole data landscape that the company has. And now the, the point for the SAP Data Hub is to provide for companies again a holistic data landscape overview covering all the data that is existing in the company and especially bridging basically what you have as enterprise data with your big data parts. So with your sen the sensor data that might be typically in the cloud with the data that you have in your enterprise and you will keep also in your enterprise because it's your valuable data at the end. So um, that's exactly the point and for SAP the problem is we are known in this world, right? The structured, transactional way fully structured ETL processes, well-formed, right? You get from your structured sources, read it, transaction in the data warehouse, and you get your analytics. And now you have basically other characteristics on top when you talk about big data. So how are you doing a transactional data stream? The question, how are you exactly um, processing sensor streams, for example, together with big data, right? And this is where the data hub comes in. And I want to give you one example why this is so valuable for our customers. So this is a customer, POC that we did some time ago. So we had a company that were providing basically anonymized data from variables, heart rate, battery, speed, and distance. And we had a shoe selling company, which is providing basically uh, their sales data, right? And what we want to do basically is we want to bring this together to enable now advanced capabilities, advanced analytics, advanced machine learning, etc. So what was the outcome of that? So the first thing we could do is we could group the customers of this company into customer groups based on their capability of jogging. So if you have the casual jogger like me, who runs a, s a small distance with a low speed and a high heart rate, and we have the professional joggers like Suhail, who runs basically a long distance with a high speed and a, and a low heart rate. So based on this information, we could have new customer groups that you couldn't get before. And then we could bring the sales numbers in and saw some interesting effects. Yeah. So for example, the casual jogger is 52% of, uh, of my customer base, while the professional athlete is just 3%. So what we would think of in the first place is, yeah, sure, I do the vast majority of my deals with, do with those guys. But as you can see from the numbers, this is not the case. Those are even the guys I'm doing the, less, the, the least sales. And it's obvious why, because a casual jogger, I mean, I'm buying maybe one pair of shoes a year, right? But do those guys, they buy equipment as hell. And the average per sale is so high that they get at the end, even with the 3%, a much higher sales. And we even went one step further and said, look, what shoes are these customer groups are typically wearing? So we were seeing here, there's no real preference for the casual jogger. So if you want to do a marketing campaign with them, you may maybe give them 10% discount on your whole portfolio and they can choose themselves. For the professional athlete, you might not even need to give them discount. They have a clear preference for a shoe. So if you bring a new version of the shoe, the only thing you might need to do is give them basically an information up front. There's a new shoe, come to our store, you will get it one week before anyone else. And they will just come there and, and get it. So the data hub basically now is for SAP the bridge between the existing transactional systems and the big data systems. And we are doing and trying to establish this bridge with four major components. First component is a containerized runtime component that we deploy close to the data. And it's obvious why, because in the big data uh, landscape, you cannot move data around. You don't want to move the data from your cloud storage to some on-premise systems or the other way around. You want to at least process it here, pre-process it in a way of filtering, reducing the scope, aggregating it to bring it to a meaningful size. 
The second is that we want to provide a holistic data landscape overview by allowing to connect all of the systems that are involved in your data landscape, be it SAP proprietary systems or open source systems or third party systems or cloud systems, all connected to one overview and then have automatic crawling and profiling of the data to give you one system and one catalog that shows all your data in your entire company and gives you exactly this holistic data landscape view that our customers would like to have. The second is, now you know where the data is, but you also want to process it. Process it. And this is where also then the Kubernetes uh, part comes into the play. So uh, we have a so-called data pipelining principle, which is serverless computing in the sense of we, the customer can create a pipeline of operations, <coughs> and then we flow the data into the, op, into the pipeline and apply the operations while the data flows through, which is totally different to the transactional systems we have here. And the important thing here is that here, these containers that we are using for that can be deployed in the cluster completely independently, organized by the Data Hub system. And this enables new and especially uh, processing paradigms where you can combine big data, uh, sorry, big data and enterprise data together. And the last one is SAP is not really known for being very open and uh, uh, it's more like a closed environment in some cases. With the Data Hub, we want to break exactly this paradigm and allow on the one hand side customers to define their own connectors, own operations, own operators based on their coding and bring it into the data hub and allow the connectivity, as I said already, to all kinds of systems. So I'm skipping the architecture. You will get the slides if you want to have a look or talk with me, then I, I can also walk you through that, but I'm skipping it for now. So what we basically achieve with that is a virtual pipeline that leads to a flow based big data management system, right? So you basically start with collecting the data from your sources in a completely, let's say, really big data way, no data types, no schema, nothing in this direction. Bring it in your data lake. You add then basically structure to this data by defining a schema, adding data types, bringing it to a big data system that is already in a relational structure while still offering you a huge amount of storage to allow the big data storing inside of that. But with the relational structure, you can then easily bring it together with your enterprise data with aggregating, modeling, transformation, federating the data, bring it to your enterprise data warehouse and then analyze it in your applications that you have on top. So why is now SAP so keen into this hybrid cloud topic? So we all heard about, you know, the cloud is everything. Everyone moves to the cloud, right? Everyone tells that. So my question to you is why do you think are a lot of customers still operating their own data center? Any guess? Change is bad. <laughs> that's one, it's maybe the one most important point, yes, but there's one more. Compliance. They, exactly. Line. They have high value enterprise data and they need to be compliant with data security, uh, uh, data, data, uh, and also they want, don't want all the data in the cloud, sales data. Customer, you might be not allowed GDPR just as a topic, right? Uh, ERP data, maybe in the cloud, but most companies don't do that, right? Speed of access is also. Speed of access is the second part, that's true. <laughs> But what I want is they want the best of both worlds. So they want to secure this data, but they still want to do all these operations in the cloud. They want machine learning, for example, from Google. They want cheap cloud storage, for example, from S3, AWS, advanced analytics, IoT stream processing. They want the best of both worlds. And the question is how they can achieve that. And for sure, I mean, we are talking about a data hub and a data hub is a solution to do that because it is deployable in all the clouds and on premise. And the basis for these deployments is, as we were saying already, Kubernetes. So one and a half years back, we decided to bet, let's say, and there was a risk at this time still, to bet on Kubernetes, right? There was a lot of others in the, in the market, uh, but we were betting that Kubernetes will win the race and they won it, obviously. And the advantage is now we can say the Data Hub can be deployed everywhere, in the clouds, on premise. And this brings us the major advantage that we can, what I said in the beginning, deploy the runtime to where the data is, so be it in the cloud or be it on premise, and have the data processing right away where the data resides. So the question, however, is now Kubernetes in the cloud is easy. Alan is here, he will talk about that a bit uh, later. It's a managed service. You one click, two click, three clicks, and you get your Kubernetes up and running, perfect. You deploy the data hub, two more clicks, and that's it, you have it. But on premise? When we go to an enterprise customer and talk about them, you know, uh, you can have the data hub, but now please give us a Kubernetes cluster. The first thing is you see a big question mark in the eyes. Uh, Kubernetes, what is that? So the adoption in the enterprise world of this great new technology is simply not there yet, right? And even if they have knowledge about this technology, 
they don't know how to operate a cluster. They don't know how to support a complete Kubernetes stack. And that's why SAP basically, and this is all the questions that basically the customers are asking us, um, that's why our, tech, our, our strategy, and that's why we have a partner with Cisco and with Google together, is to bring this hybrid cloud world to the customer by setting on top of the Cisco container platform. So what we get now is we don't need to go to the customer and say, please provide us with Kubernetes, then you can run our software. But we can say, look, there's a complete stack from the infrastructure with Hyperflex over the container platform or the platform itself, which is then the container platform and the Google hybrid cloud part. And then on top, you have the software layer, which is running the data hub. So you can have basically all of that together in, in one system. Right? And this gives for us, this solves for us, a major industry-wide problem because we can show and we can give our customers an end-to-end -end turnkey solution right? for orchestrating their landscapes, the data landscapes, for bridging enterprise data and big data and making value out of that, just like in the example that I have shown you today. And to show you a bit of the openness, and I have to speed up a little bit, I want to show you one small example of how easy it is to extend the functionality of this data hub in the container way uh, that uh, Suhail was presenting in the beginning. So I'm skipping all of that. So just assume we have a very, very simple mission in our company. We have, want to compute the word count histogram over documents. So what we need is we need a tokenizer and we need to count the words, obviously. Right? So what we're doing first is I have our development department. It's my development department. They for sure build the best tokenizer in the world. I mean, that's clear, right? And they are the fancy guys. They like to develop and go. Then I have the data science department. And for sure, it's my data scientists. They write the best histogram calculator in the world, obviously. But data scientists tend to use Python. So the question is now, how can I bring those things together? Because natively, they cannot communicate that well. How can I deploy it together and make them work together? So we have two options. Option one is, I go to my system administrator and tell him, do it. And he will obviously not be very happy if he has to install all of the stuff in a cluster. Have to deploy Python everywhere, the Go binaries everywhere, everything he needs to do on all nodes. He doesn't want to do that. The second option is, to use a data hub pipeline. And I will show you how easy this is. So we have these, we have these two things, these two deployments here. So we have the histogram, we have the tokenizer, and now it's very easy for us basically to, uh, to de it just takes you three files basically, right? You need a Docker file which, where you describe what you need for your software, right? So you basically, for, very toy example, right? So for this, this, uh, this Python part, you just tell, I need a certain operating system in my container. I'm telling, OK, I need Python. So I don't need to install the Python on the nodes, but I'm packaging the Python inside of the container. right? And I'm saying, use my, my, uh, my, my Python script that I implemented beforehand. Right? That's all it takes. The same thing for the tokenizer and the Go part. Packaging Go inside, packaging the binary inside, and that's it. And what I can then do is I can create now a pipeline out of that which looks like that, where I have on the one hand side the tokenizer, the Go binary, and I'm just saying the data, the data hub deploy the thing and run the, the, the Go binary inside. We have the connectivity here to the, histo uh, to the histogram part, to the Python part, and have here the translation with those two addition operators that are automatically set here to translate basically automatically the binary format of Go, the Go message, to the binary format of the Python message and have then both parts work together seamlessly. So when we deploy the whole thing in the cluster, we will see the Kubernetes cluster in a second, hopefully, here. We can see we deploy this now, and the important thing is we don't need to deploy this now on one node to have them work together, but it can be on two nodes. You can see this here, 59, 58, 58. So both of these parts are on, or two of the three parts are on two different nodes, and they can still work together using the messaging system that are basically uh, bringing both things in conjunction. So now this is starting up, right? This is typical Kubernetes stuff. Um, pods are scheduled. Now they are here. And now we can see how and if, hopefully, I mean, OK, it's a demo. It will work, right? It's a video. Um, how they now work together. So we start here the small terminal. We hit a small sentence inside. Hit Enter. And what we can see now is, that now the tokenizer tokenizes everything and the histogram counter counters everything, seamlessly working together. And the important part is now, what does this mean for your company? For a company, it means you can have the code you developed beforehand without even considering the data hub or the stack we are deploying. 
You just take this, what you have written before, put it inside of a Docker container, register it as an operator, and your data science can use their data models, their connectors, their systems that they want to have, and are not relying on what SAP is bringing you. So this is the core of this open platform we are providing and allows the customers to go with real, let's say, cloud feeling inside even of, uh, um, inside of their data centers, inside of their own um, stack and deployment. Okay, so that was it. Thanks a lot. Any questions? So you can see that <clears throat> SAP and Cisco are working together in a multi-cloud environment. They have a multi-cloud vision, we have a shared vision. We're providing a common platform for Kubernetes. They're providing a common data ingress and ingestion um, product. So in a multi-cloud environment, you have both places covered now with a nice solution that we are offering to our customers. And uh, you can hear more about this down in our booth. You'll hear more about the solution stack from our friends from Google and our architect on the, uh, on the solution side. And later on, you'll even hear <clears throat> more details into our platform. But